What's going on you guys and welcome back to another video on the channel. If it is your first time here, my name is Brandon. As always, we do have our investing academy, which is that first link down below if you're looking for courses and training right here in Canada. But we're gonna be diving into three stocks to buy right now, dividend payers, a couple right here in Canada, and we're gonna be finishing off with a US selection. If you guys enjoy, give us a thumbs up. We're not wasting any time today. The first stock is the company Emera ticker EMA.TO and the shares today are trading for $25 Canadian on the TSX. They have come down off highs. They're down about 15% off their 2020 highs. And today we're looking at a starting dividend yield of 5%, which is an amazing starting yield. Morningstar values this stock as I know you guys like to look at these. They see this stock at a 10% discount currently. And Amera is the company for those not familiar. This is a company based out of Nova Scotia over on the East Coast. East Coast. They provide all sorts of services when it comes to energy and delivering electricity, utilities, etc, etc. And that's all throughout Canada as well as the US. There are some areas such as Tampa, Florida that they are very apparent in. Also, you'll find them in the Caribbean, oddly enough. But one of the great things about a business like this is due to the nature of utilities and how these energies and how this company's services are distributed, a lot of it comes from regulated sources. In fact, this actually grew by 13% year over year. This is something that they are really emphasizing at the moment. And regulated, of course, just means that they are fixed rates when there's, um, you typically come across these in the utility space. In order to make sure prices are fair for everybody, you get these fixed set rates, but you get so much predictability, you get so much reliability because they're essentially, they're, they're regulated. So a big portion of this company's earnings you can count on year after year after year. One thing that I know a lot of you will like as we get comments on this all the time is that this is a company that's really focusing on more or less shifting to the sustainable energy side of things, delivering their services in an ethical way, renewables, etc. One of the newer projects that they're working on in Florida is basically designed to deliver their power all via solar panels and solar power, which is looking very, very promising. In terms of the metrics with Amera, they are looking quite good. They trade at a price to book of 1.5. They're trading at just over 14 times earnings. If you do look over to the right side of this chart on the screen, you will see that they are still growing their numbers actually at a very nice pace. Revenue over the past three years has been growing at 12.6% compounded. Operating income, net income, earnings per share, all trending in a nice positive pattern. So metric wise, companies looking good. In terms of the dividend, I'm sure that 5% yield got you all pretty excited. Well, they've been growing this dividend for 17 years and not just inching it up a percentage point or two, they've been growing it at 8.29%, which is very attractive. This to me just goes to show when you're a business that operates in this type of field with those regulated earnings, you can do a lot in terms of raising the dividends over the years. So the fact that the shares have slowly and steadily come down, hey, as a dividend investor, you should actually love to see this. Yields start creeping up and I could definitely be looking to scoop up some shares if you're someone that's looking for some reliable passive income right here in Canada. Moving on to stock number two, this is gonna be a fun one because I'm actually giving you guys an option here, two stocks to look into. You have the stock TELUS and you have the stock Bell. And actually my girlfriend was looking for some telecom exposure. She didn't own any in her portfolio. She opted with TELUS. As you guys know, if you followed the channel for a while, I do own Bell. And today TELUS shares are tra trading under the ticker T at $26 per share. 4.73% dividend, very, very attractive. And Bell today, trading at $55 for share, shares have come down. We're looking at a 6.28% dividend. And Bell actually did just increase their dividend by 5% a week or two back. So very, very attractive on the dividend side. And what's interesting about this selection, and even this segment here, why we're covering two stocks in one, is I feel like we can almost put them up side by side and look at a comparison. And the metrics do suggest, if we looked at, for example, Bell trading at a PE of 22 rather than 27, we see Bell with the yield that's 1.5 or about 1.5% higher. Morningstar actually has Bell discounted at 14% rather than tell us at seven, you actually see Rogers here, which we're not gonna cover in this video because I actually talked about them in another video. You can make a very fair argument based on the metrics, based on the numbers, that we should be leaning more towards Bell. And maybe that's the more attractive buy at the moment. And we went through this exact, looked at all of this with myself and my girlfriend, and she still opted with TELUS. Now I entirely stand by that pick. And that was simply because of personal preference with the company. She's a bigger fan of TELUS than Bell, and she didn't really have a great desire to own Bell. And although the numbers may suggest one company's looking better 
one way or another, I wouldn't suggest going out and buying a stock like this if it's one you don't want just because of a little discrepancy in the numbers. We could make a counter argument for TELUS and say that Bell actually has the higher payout ratio. Now, both companies do have a decently high payout ratio, but I think Bell is up in the 130% range. You may be wondering, how can you be paying out 130%? Well, it's quite common. You see that a lot in the energy sector with volatile earnings and clearly, the, both of these companies have been impacted by the uh, coronavirus and everything that we've kind of seen in our world. That said, Bell did again go with that 5% increase. I was actually expecting slightly lower given those ratios, but hey, as long as they're able to maintain that, I think that's something that just comes with it. One of the pieces of articles that I just came across more for a personal interest sake was that, they, that Bell in particular, I believe laid off a bunch of employees and their executives still got these big grants from the government. And hey, you can take your opinion on that. I don't really have much of an opinion on that. I guess that's just the way it is. One major thing as well that does differentiate these companies from a business operation level is that Bell does have a big media segment, Bell Media, which is actually where a big chunk of these layoffs were. TELUS doesn't have a media segment or nothing close to it in terms of Bell. But at the end of the day, as I told my girlfriend, pick the stock that you prefer. Pick the company that you would rather back. And although Telus shares are up, I do love buying stocks as they're coming down. Typically, that's something we look for. But with a strong company like Telus with the 4.7% dividend, hey, there's not a problem with this. If you are looking for, let's say, a little more quote unquote value, if we want to put it that way, you do have the lower PE with Bell. And again, you have the 6.28% dividend. Moving on to our final stock for today's video, we're bouncing over to the US market, which in reality just has so much more selection than we have here in Canada, but it's the company Walmart, ticker WMT, largest retailer in the world with the 1.57% dividend. And really the news that came out today, which actually spurred an idea for this video was they were down 6.67% on what I believe to be actually a pretty good earnings report. They did miss on earnings. However, they saw 70% e-commerce growth. As we know, they've been growing this segment over the past year or so very, very well. Same store sales were up 8.6%. So I wasn't too sure why the shares dropped this much. It's funny, man, this whole world, this whole stock market is backwards. You have companies like Walmart making billions of dollars and they're dropping in value. And you have a lot of companies out there that are not making any money, nothing close to it, and they're just skyrocketing. It's a flipped up market we got right now, but hey, it is what it is. This could have likely been tagged on a weak outlook, maybe even some profit taking, as this company has done pretty well during COVID, right? Everything's been closed, and Walmart's actually been somewhat of a benefactor of that because they were, of course, an essential service where a lot of other options were closed. People were kind of forced to go there. They did raise their dividend for the 48th consecutive year. Now I'll note they only raised it by 2%, which raises the dividend to $2.20 per share. It's a raise nonetheless. One of the things that's minor, but I do think is worth noting is that they did mention that they are gonna be bumping up their minimum wage in the US to $15 a share. And why this is important, doing this out of choice with their cash, this I think is a good long-term play in the sense of keeping your employees happy. You could do a lot of other things with that cash, but for the longevity of a company, you keep your employees happy, there's less turnover, you get better staff at the end of the day. I think that is important to keep your staff well paid. I guess you could put it that way in a simple in a simple little explanation there. Bill Gates in his foundation, as we know, is a big shareholder in Walmart. It's actually their fifth largest position. And I don't really think you can argue with the company Walmart. Trading at a PE of 19.8, given the current environment, that's something that I like to see. At the end of the day, this is no doubt a defensive stock. It's a bellwether company and it can suit a really good role as part of your portfolio, kind of those core long-term holdings. And in my opinion, we didn't have a bad earnings whatsoever. Yet to see the stock selling off six, 7%, who knows what's in store tomorrow, but it would be one on my watch list because if people are gonna sell out of this giant, out of this behemoth, it could be one to look to buy the dip on or just chip away at your position. Because in my opinion, Walmart, despite the Amazons, despite everything else, is a great long-term hold. Today, the shares traded $137 with the 1.57% dividend. But that'll wrap it up for the video, guys. There's a few suggestions for you guys to go look into if you're looking to deploy some capital. Hopefully, this can point you in maybe the right direction. Of course, this is just my opinion. This is just what I'm looking at. Always be sure to do your own research and due diligence. And let me know down below, what do you think of my stock picks? Do you own them? Are you thinking about owning them? I'd be happy to hear from you guys. If you did enjoy the video, 
take a moment and hit that thumbs up button because that really does help. And subscribe if you're not already subscribed to the channel. We post videos like this every single week, multiple videos a week. So subscribe and hit the bell for notifications. And as always, we do have our investing academy, which you can gladly check out as that first link down in the description below if you're looking for courses and training right here in Canada, all online. As always, I thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next video.